Hi, we are back. It is Weather for Weather Geeks time Wednesday evening. We did not do a Weather Geeks Tuesday evening because the weather was just too active. I had to keep a close eye on the radar and watch out for any warnings, and it was just a, a busy evening, so we skipped this video in lieu of some uh, Facebook Lives last night. But kind of back to our regular schedule tonight, so let's uh, let's geek out, and, and we have some good news and bad news, certainly, in the forecast for the next several days. First of all, the wind. Of course, the big-time story today, as expected, we had some really ferocious gusts. Uh, averaging 35 to 45, but we did have a peak gust at uh, 52 miles per hour at the Youngstown Warren Airport at 8.16 this morning. As far as the hourly observations go, uh, 41 uh, at the top of the hour at 8 o'clock. We matched that at 2 o'clock. Now the wind is slowly starting to diminish. This process will continue as we go through the night. Uh, 24 during the 7 o'clock hour at the Youngstown Warren Airport, closer to 40 in Pittsburgh, and gusting over 30 in Cleveland. Again, our wind gusts and sustained speeds will diminish tonight. Now, the wind is not going to go completely calm, so it's still going to be brisk late tonight into tomorrow morning. And with temperatures down in the 20s, that means we've got, uh, we've got to talk about some wind chills later on. Uh, in the meantime, some unofficial observations, aside from the number at the airport, the unofficial observations across our region today, a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of uh, gusts of 50 to 55 miles per hour. Uh, one up in New Lebanon and northeastern parts of Mercer County and down in southwestern Columbiana County, Hanoverton uh, at about 51 miles per hour. Also of interest over the last several hours, we've had some pretty decent snow showers across the region. I would even call some of these snow squalls with some uh, quick reductions in visibility, even local whiteout conditions. Now, this is not impacting road surfaces. None of this is really sticking to anything other than maybe some windshields and some random grassy surfaces, but certainly reductions in visibility have been noted over the last uh, several hours. In the meantime, of course, we had quite a bit of rain uh, the previous night and then into yesterday and in the, into parts of last night as well. Uh, so a flood warning, no surprise, has been issued for Eagle Creek, southwestern Trumbull County. This is uh, an area that sees a lot of flood warnings over the course of a, uh, of a year because uh, it doesn't take much for this to start overflowing a little bit, it's overflowing its banks. And uh, we're up to 10.66 feet at Phalanx Station. That's about a foot or so above flood stage, which begins at 9.5 feet. Uh, the flood warning will continue into tonight, and then we should see this start to recede. All right, so wind chills tomorrow morning as you get up to head off to work and school. Uh, Upper teens to around 20. This is a heck of a way to run April, um, but uh, this is the reality that we have to deal with tonight into tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon will be better. It won't be as windy as today. It's still going to be chilly, though, with air temperatures in the lower 40s, wind chills in the lower 30s. Otherwise, our big picture for your Thursday, uh, can't rule out a flurry first thing in the morning. Low end chances of precipitation shown here. Those will fade away, and I think we'll see a partly sunny sky on average. Also of note, tomorrow the sunrise is back before 7 o'clock. Of course, those sunrises jumped ahead an hour a few weeks ago when we had the uh, switch to daylight saving time. Now they're back before 7 o'clock and will stay that way for several months. Also, our sunsets are getting closer and closer to 8 p.m. We'll get there here in just a little more than a week or so. All right, so some flurries fade away tomorrow morning, some sunshine for tomorrow afternoon. Then a, a weak little front comes in tomorrow night. It's a warm front, and this might produce a quick period of very light snow or maybe just a few flurries and maybe even a few raindrops at times late tomorrow night. No real impacts from that. Uh, of bigger concern perhaps is what will happen as we go into late Friday towards evening into the overnight hours and maybe first thing Saturday morning. Pretty good low pressure system is going to form along our front off to the south, spread some moisture north, and while we'll be on the northern fringes of this, I do think we are probably going to see some snow from this and maybe even you know, a couple inches here locally. And this uh, could have an impact for uh, the home opener up in Cleveland on Friday evening as well. This will uh, continue heading east. Any snow, any lingering snow will end very early Saturday. Most of Saturday will just be cold and quiet. But this will be a big deal for parts of southern Ohio, West Virginia, uh, the PA Turnpike, uh, and over towards perhaps D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, maybe up to New York City as well. This is going to be accumulating snow a week into April. It's not unheard of, certainly, but it is a little unusual, especially as far south as Washington. Getting more than an inch of snow in April is its hard to do as far south as D.C., but it's possible with this that they will see that much. At the very least, uh, the skiers may be happy. Some late-season skiing across uh, parts of the, the mountains of the central Appalachians around uh, West Virginia into southwestern PA. All right, home opener for the Tribe on Friday. It's a 410 first pitch. Only uh, 
for opening day do we have kind of a weird start time like that. It's more of a football start time, really. But uh, the game's going to start probably with tranquil weather. It's going to be cold. It's going to be breezy, if not windy. Notice the winds out of the west, 10 to 20. The problems may come later on with uh, some snow trying to push into Cleveland, as well as, of course, here in Youngstown. Uh, towards the second half of the game, you know, after 6, especially close to 7, increasing chances for some snow. So this will be touch and go. A lot of scenarios at play here. One of the scenarios is they start on time, they get five and a half innings in, it's official game, and then they'll have to call it at some point. Another scenario is that it's a quick game, not a lot of offense, and they are able to squeeze this thing in before the snow becomes a problem. And then, of course, the other uh, possibility will be they start, they don't get an official five and a half innings in before the snow becomes a problem, and uh, they end up having to delay it uh, until, you know, a later date or something like that. So that's you know, it's a tricky forecast for the Tribal Wimbledon on Friday. If you have plans to head up to Progressive Field, keep an eye on the latest forecasts because this is uh, still kind of in the tricky phase as far as getting the details of this right. Wanted to show you this. There's some good news in the longer range. 8 to 14 day outlook. Uh, so this would take us from the middle of next week through the following weekend. A rare orange blob in the eastern U.S. I think it's going to warm up. Now, it may not be sustained for very long, maybe just a few days, but it is going to warm up uh, for a while at the end of next week. And uh, let me show you uh, the overall pattern here. We're looking at temperature anomalies here. This is the European model. And here's our cold pattern. What else is new? Look at, look at this plunge of Arctic air coming into the U.S. at the end of this week. I mean, those are deep purples in Montana and the Dakotas. I mean, th those are temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below average uh, for April. And so, yeah, another surge of cold air. And, you know, we're going to be in the mid-30s on Saturday. That's it for highs. It's hard to be in the mid-30s with some sunshine in April. As strong as the sun is, the, the sun angle in the first week or two of April is basically the same as late August, early September. It's hard to, you know, keep the temperature in the 30s when you've got some sun out. But that's what we expect on Saturday. So one more shot of pretty intense April cold. The cold will ease a little bit next week, but then look what happens as we go towards the end of next week. Finally, some of the warmth to our west will shift east, and the western U.S. will finally cool off. So this is next Friday into Saturday. This looks pretty nice to me, and in fact, it is possible we get well into the 60s, if not 70 or so, for a couple of days at the end of next week and into the following weekend. Now the question is, how long does that stick around? I don't think it sticks around long. This is still, overall, a chilly pattern. This is kind of a mirage, if you will. It's a little oasis of warmth, because look what happens after this. It likely turns chilly by April standards again as we go towards the 17th, 18th, 19th. You know, it doesn't look as harshly cold as it as the current pattern, but the kind of warmth that we're likely to see at the end of next weekend and next weekend is, you know, it's unlikely to stick around for very long. Before I leave you tonight, I uh, wanted to recap the severe weather a little bit yesterday. It was a very active severe weather day. Very good forecasts from the Storm Prediction Center, including a handful of tornadoes, and this includes in the state of Ohio, uh, confirmed tornadoes. Uh, a survey confirmed an EF1 tornado uh, in Clark County, Ohio. That's in southwest Ohio, uh, and just south of the Columbus area in uh, Grove City, Ohio, a, a confirmed EF1 tornado there as well. I've seen some pictures of that storm, a very photogenic more like a Plains, you know, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma kind of storm. And it did indeed produce a, an EF1 tornado with widespread damage in Franklin County. That's the county Columbus is in. And uh, Grove City is kind of the, one of the southwestern suburbs of Columbus. And uh, they sustained damage from a tornado uh, during the day yesterday. Thankfully, we didn't have anything like that around here. But we've had our problems with the wind, including, of course, power outages. We've had some localized flooding issues as well. Thankfully, no real big ticket items coming our way over the next day or two. Going to keep an eye on that late Friday into Friday night system. Wouldn't be surprised if we had another couple of inches of snow out of that, especially in our southern viewing area. Look for more updates on that on future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. In the meantime, have a great rest of your Wednesday night.